the submission is complete, justification is impossible. You don't need to get on that table. I've told you before, let me tell you again at 5 after 8. You can change a lot of your behaviors without God's help. You with me? I know people who decided smoking is taking up too much of my money. I'm tired of brown lips and brown teeth and brown lungs, so I'm done. I'm done. There are people who decided I'm sick to death of drinking is drinking up all my money. They stop. People have stopped a whole host of behaviors by themselves. Amen. But there's one thing you can never stop. And that's, this, and that's the condition of the heart. No man, no woman can decide, look, I'm tired of a sinful heart. Let me give myself a righteous heart. You can't do it. No. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You cannot do it. That requires the intervention of God. Yeah. Because that task is possible only for God. Amen. Yeah. That's how terrible sin is. Only God can fix it. Now, if the things that are impossible for men is possible with God, let me make it more practical. What is there in your life and mind you and I consider we cannot conquer, we cannot get over? When we say that, we make God a what? A liar. A liar. And the man or the woman who makes God a liar is calling him whom? A savior. Savior. Now, you're better off saying, and so am I, I don't want to lose it. Now that's more honest. God says, be warm or cold. But don't be lukewarm. Be hot or cold. It is better to say, look, I don't want to give up lusting. Than to say, God can't take this out of me. Because the thing, say it with me. The things that are, say it with me. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. Including whatever weakness you and I have. Amen. If you doubt that, and I doubt it, we doubt God. Yes. And to doubt God is to call him yeah. a liar. Amen. And the person who calls God a liar effectively calls him what? Satan. Amen. The greatest insult to God is unbelief. You know, God opens his Bible. In Genesis 1-3, you don't need to go there, you know it. And God did what? And God said. Say it again. And God said. said. Genesis 1 3, 1 6. And God said. said. 1 9. And God said. said. 1 11. And God said. said. 1 14. And God said. 1 20. And God said. said. 1 24. And God said. 1 26. And God says. God said. God What is the Holy Ghost trying to hammer, hammer, hammer into our heads? This word. This. When this speaks, things happen. Amen. This verse said, I can heal you of your sickness. Yeah. This verse said, I can break your bad habit. Yeah. Because this verse said, the things that are impossible with men, finish it. <laughs> this same word that said, let there be light, is the same word that says, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. The same word. Yeah. And God deliberately opens the Bible with a demonstration of how powerful his word is. Amen. Amen. The Bible doesn't open with how good God is. What a loving Savior Jesus will be. It opens with an exposition of the power of God's word. God says, here am I, here's the power of my word. Because from that point on, particularly after sin, God will invite us to trust Him yes. by trusting His Word. Amen. But before He calls us to trust Him, He gives us in Genesis 1 a curriculum vitae. That too fancy, a resume. Mm. So He says, here's what I've done. I'm applying for the position of Savior. Are you with me? Amen. I'm applying to the world for the position of Savior. Now here's my CV. Here's my resume. And you know what resumes are? They are presumably accurate records of the things we've done and can do and have accomplished. And God said, I created heaven and earth by using my word. 
And that same word can recreate your life. Amen. And the law is part of that word. Amen. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Not only what he said when he was on this earth, the words that Christ has spoken to us stretch from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. They include the law, the Lord's life, to the one who accepts it. The same word that saves the person who believes it condemns the person who rejects it. Yes. And so Jesus said in John 12, 48, 49, I don't condemn you. There's someone who will condemn you, he said Moses, meaning the writings of Moses. Did you hear me? The same word that justifies condemns, depending on a person's reaction to that word. And so the law is life, depending on your reaction, your attitude to God's law. Receive it, you lie on that table, in wide awake conscious submission, it is life that God puts into the heart when he writes that law. Every word is life. You reject it, it functions from outside of you and condemns you, and I've told you that before. But the choice is yours and mine. Listen to me, 10 after 8. You and I cannot change our hearts. And it is not change of behavior that fits us for the kingdom. First of all, it is a change of heart. And only God can do that. Let me repeat my words. It is not change of behavior primarily that fits us for the kingdom. It is a change of heart. Amen. Then that change heart will produce the change behavior. Amen. Is God's law written on your heart? Have you asked him to do that? Yes. If you've asked him to do that, then you must observe all ten. He doesn't write nine. Remember, the law in the tabernacle symbolizes the law written on the heart. The blood of the animal represent the blood of Christ to come, both shed blood. The difference is the blood of an animal, the blood of Christ. Both the law and the tabernacle written on stone. Same law written on my heart. Same law. Different material, but same words. Amen. He does not write the Constitution of the United States on the heart. So your first level of identification is not from the United States, it is I'm a child of God. Amen. You didn't hear me. Amen. You didn't hear me. You didn't. <laughs> he does not write the church manual on your heart. Amen. Let me say something risky. <laughs> blessings upon you, sister. It allows me to think twice about what I'm about to say. So blessings upon you. <laughs> Where people are truly converted. All they need is this. Amen. 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 They don't need lawyers or mediators. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit directs. No, what was it I said? Where people are what? <laughs> God is a writing Encyclopedia Britannica. What does he write in the heart? Law. What else? What else is your right? Listen to me. You told me you're thinking. The Bible says God writes His law on our hearts. What else does the Bible say God writes on the heart? We're coming close to the end for you to break my heart like this. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. Go to Hebrews chapter 8. Read verse 10. I don't want to rebuke you tonight. You look so nice. <laughs> Hebrews 8, read really verse 10. Go there with me quickly. Let me open my Bible again. It's dangerous to stand on the podium and not have your Bible open. Hebrews 8, verse 10. What does it say? For this, I will do what? House of Israel after those days, I will do what? Put my laws where? Into their minds and write them where? What does he write in the heart and the mind? It's the same thing. What does he write? What else? What else? Is that written there? Does the verse say that? Now I'm stretching this out to make a point. What does the verse say God writes? What else? Nothing. Are you with me? Nothing else. 
unless you see something else. Show me. Let me say it again clearly. And I want my friends listening across the world uh, doing much better than you are right there in person. He writes the law and nothing else. You tell me what was in the tabernacle on those two tables of stone. What else but the law? What else? Nothing. Then what does he write on the heart? Nothing else but the law. Understand me clearly. All the only thing God writes on the heart when we surrender to him is his law because the law is the whole duty of man. If the law had been the partial duty of man, you would have had to bring something else. But it represents the whole duty of man. He has nothing else to write. All God wants from you and me is that life that his son lived on this earth. Amen. And that life was righteous. And that life was perfectly witnessed by the law. And it is when God writes the law in the heart that change takes place. As long as the law is in your Bible, you're just a nice person, probably. As long as the law is in the Bible, we may be law abiding in the eyes of the government. As long as the law remains in the Bible on paper, we are maybe good church members. It is only when the law is written on the heart that we become children of the kingdom of God. Amen. It must move from the figure, from the type, to the antitype. The type is the sheep. What's the antitype? Christ. The law on stone is the type. What's the antitype? The law on the heart. Please, ask God tonight. Write your law on my heart. So that we obey Him naturally. Whether we do wrong or right, when you do it from the heart, it will done with pleasure. Did you hear me? There are people who commit crimes with pleasure. They rejoice in their criminal activity. Well, because it's in the heart. Now, when God changes that heart by changing the writing of the heart, puts his law, the person now gets pleasure in doing what's right from the heart. But that includes the Sabbath commandment. You keep it gladly. You don't start arguing. Well, well, it was changed and you can't find a Bible first. Uh -uh. It's in the heart and you keep it gladly. Amen. And so tonight I ask you from my heart, in the presence of a holy God, how many of you will say with me, Father, I submit myself to you. To you and you alone, please, I give you permission. Write your law in my heart. Can I see your right hand? Stand up with me, then I have another question for you. Stand with me quickly. So 17 after 8. Someone is not keeping God's Sabbath day commandment. It's all or nothing with God. You can't keep nine and say we're at 99% or 90%. No, 99, a 99% Christian is going to turn to hell. You didn't hear me. A Christian who's 99.9% saved is going straight to hell. You're either 100% or you're not. It's all or nothing with God. He wants all 10 commandments kept. There's someone listening to me, you're not keeping God's Sabbath commandment. It's part of the deal. And you want to say, Father, help me to obey all ten of your commandments. Help me, please. I'm willing. I'm struggling with willing. Help me. If you're that person, raise your right hand. Okay, hands down. Listen to me. You're not keeping God's Sabbath command. You're not keeping it. But your heart has been touched by this message, other messages you've heard. And you want to say, Father, help me to keep your commands. Help me. I'm willing. I'm weak. But help me. You raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> come, let me pray for you. Come. We can never pray too much. Amen. Now by coming, you're saying, I want to start this coming Sabbath to keep the law properly, to keep God's Sabbath day. Because the Sabbath commandment